When most people think of hit and miss engines, they imagine something small. A few horsepower, a slow flywheel, a simple machine quietly ticking away. But that image tells only part of the story. Because in the world of hit and miss engines, this was considered big. Not by modern standards, but by the standards of its time. And some of these engines pushed the hit and miss principle further than most people realize. Today, five horsepower sounds insignificant. But in the early days of hit and miss engines, five horsepower was already serious power. A five horsepower engine could pump water, grind grain, drive saws, and run multiple machines through belts and line shafts. For farms and workshops, at the turn of the 20th century, that was transformational. So when we talk about big hit and miss engines, we are not talking about modern expectations. We are talking about what was considered extreme for this design philosophy. Hit and miss engines were never built for speed. They were built for torque, low speed, heavy loads, long hours. As power increased, everything else had to increase with it. Cylinder size, crankshaft strength, and most visibly, flywheel mass. Because the larger the engine, the more energy had to be stored between firing cycles. And that energy lived in the flywheels. Between the late 1890s and the early 1930s, it is estimated that over 3 million hit and miss engines were produced worldwide. The vast majority of that production fell into the smallest categories. More than 85% of all hit and miss engines were rated between 0 and 5 horsepower. Large engines were never the norm, they were the exception. Most hit and miss engines fell below 5 horsepower. These were the everyday machines. Reliable, affordable, easy to maintain. They fired once, coasted, missed several cycles, and fired again only when needed. This behavior defined the hit and miss engine in the public imagination. But some engines went far beyond that scale. Once hit and miss engines passed 5 horsepower, they became noticeably larger and rarer. 6, 8 or 10 horsepower engines were already considered big machines. They powered sawmills, grain elevators and industrial equipment. At this level, the forces involved were no longer gentle. Each power stroke delivered enormous torque. Flywheels grew heavier. Frames became massive. Bearings had to survive years of abuse. And yet, the hit and miss principle still worked. Engines in the 12 to 15 horsepower range sat near the top of what most manufacturers ever produced as hit and miss. These were not common engines. They were expensive, heavy and purpose-built. At this scale, even a single power stroke could violently accelerate the crankshaft. The governor had to be precise. The latch-out mechanism had to be strong. The flywheels had to absorb enormous energy. These engines demonstrated just how far mechanical logic could be pushed. Beyond 15 horsepower, hit and miss engines became exceptional. Engines in the 20 to 25 horsepower range were already at the edge of practicality. Very few were built, even fewer survived. Here, the hit and miss system no longer behaved like it did on small engines. Skipping a single firing cycle was often not enough. Recovering speed required multiple consecutive hits. But the principle remained the same. 
When the governor sensed overspeed, it locked the exhaust valve open. With no compression and no vacuum, the intake valve stayed closed. No fuel entered the cylinder, no combustion occurred. And when speed dropped far enough, the exhaust valve was released. The engine fired again, sometimes once, sometimes several times in a row. Still hit and miss, just magnified by scale. At the absolute extreme stands the Fairbanks Morse Model N. With a rated output of around 40 horsepower, it represents one of the largest confirmed hit and miss engines ever built. This engine uses a true exhaust latch hit and miss governing system. The centrifugal governor physically locks the exhaust valve open during the miss cycle. The intake valve is atmospheric, opening only when vacuum is present. When the exhaust is held open, no vacuum forms. The intake remains closed, fuel is not drawn in, and combustion stops entirely. What makes this engine appear different is scale. The flywheels weigh several tons. After a long miss period, a single firing cycle is often not enough to restore operating speed. So the engine remains in the hit condition for multiple cycles. Only once the governor reaches its set speed does it latch the exhaust open again. This is not a different principle. It is the same principle operating at its absolute limit. Engines of this size were never mass-produced. They were expensive, difficult to transport, and often scrapped when newer power systems arrived. Many were dismantled for metal. Only a handful survived, preserved by collectors who understood their significance. Today, they stand as mechanical monuments. There is a reason 40 horsepower represents the upper edge. As engines grew larger, hit and misregulation became increasingly violent. Torque spikes grew extreme, mechanical stress increased, control became harder and less predictable. Industry began to favor throttle-governed engines that delivered smoother, continuous power. Not because hit and miss failed, but because its strengths no longer matched industrial needs. These engines were not big for the sake of being big. They were built to do hard work, reliably, efficiently, and with the simplest control possible. In the world of hit and miss engines, size was never about speed. It was about torque, momentum, and mechanical intelligence. And these giant machines represent the farthest point that philosophy ever reached.